All right, everyone, back with a new video, and today I'm coming to you from the Strasbourg area, but today's video, this video, doesn't feature Strasbourg. It features the place across the street, known as the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. Inside are things related to railroading. Save the clock tower! Save the clock! Help us save the clock tower! Sorry. I guess you should save the clock tower. Anyways, inside there's going to be equipment, diesel, steam. There's also a yard out here, too. So there's gonna be a lot of things to see and do. It's a $10 admission, and we have uh, basically full reign of the building as far as I'm concerned. Supposedly there's a model train display too, which I'm hoping we can get access to, but it's my first time here. It's been on my list for a while, and I'm ready to check it out. So I invite you to come along with me and whoever else is coming to. To the trains will follow the sign. Now there's a lot of things you could see here they can read up up pond. You could spend hours here if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to kind of show you the highlights along the way. But if you're in the area, you can visit it yourself and take your time. But yeah, there is a boatload, more appropriately, train load things to see here. All right, so they do have a little diagram here showing you kind of where everything is laid out here. You are here. So we have lost to see inside and outside, I believe. All right, so let's get started. You're showing a diagram, three different types of locomotives, electric, diesel, electric, and steam. And different types of freight and passenger cars. Oh, here's like a mock cab simulator, PRR. And they even have a uh, little foam pieces of coal so you can put them in the box, the firebox, build up the pressure. You know I had to try it. So over here, something that's familiar to me is a railroad speeder. These were used by the railroad companies for taking crew to different parts of the line for either work or any reason really but they were specifically for a crew and i had the privilege of riding on two of them on the Storebridge line in honesdale so if you want to see that video you can find it linked down below but they are a lot of fun and although the railroad companies no longer use them they are still being used by hobbyists and those alike who do purchase them and make them kind of usable again and they do run sanctioned runs on different lines How long does it take the wheel to stop? No, oh, seven seconds. And then you could do the handbrake one, but that'd be hard with one hand, but yeah, a lot of neat little demonstration things here. And this looks like a saddle, saddle engine, and it's in Hunter Orange. I guess it's so, uh, I think it's shot when it's hunting season. Fireless steam locomotive. No, it was a Heisler. We were built 1941, retired 1972. 040 wheel arrangement. Heisler Locomotive Works in Erie, Pennsylvania. Now, although this hasn't ran in decades, this is in pristine condition. Pretty much everything here, at least on the inside, has been cosmetically restored. But that's just like a big boiler, though. Wow. No firebox. Very unique. This one is known as a thermos bottle on wheels. Pennsylvania Power and Light Company. It's a royal blue color. Another fireless steam locomotive. 1939 built, retired in 1969. 080 wheel arrangement. Also built at the same manufacturer in Erie, Pennsylvania. Very unique. Much different than the steam engines I'm familiar with. And it even has a, uh, looks like a modern air horn up there instead of your traditional steam whistle very striking color though can't get inside but you can at least get a glimpse now this one here is kind of local to the area this is 
Known as number 1251, and it's a switcher. It's built in 1918, retired 1963, and is built by the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad in Pennsylvania. And it's an 060 switcher, similar to the Baldwin Locomotive 060 at Steamtown. This one is shorter, it's much more compact. It actually says a compact and powerful workhorse. So it's kind of, if you, uh, if I do it like this, it's kind of squished. Doesn't take up a whole lot of room or space on the tracks, but powerful. These switchers are able to move a lot of cars and be pretty efficient in the rail yards. Next up is the Cumberland Valley Railroad. So it's a relic as a showpiece. We actually have some nice lighting here too. So it looks like it's that car right there being pulled behind an old steam locomotive. Believed to be one of the oldest surviving wooden passenger cars in the United States. Wow, that's pretty incredible. So this possibly may hold a record. And it's going to survive for years to come, if not decades to come here at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, almost completely made out of wood. This one is a thing of beauty. This is known as the Tahoe, built in 1875, retired 1944, had a long life. Virginia and Truckee Railroad. And it was actually built in Philadelphia, Baldwin Locomotive Works. It's a 260 Mogul. I'm very familiar with Baldwin, as I mentioned, the 060 switcher at Steamtown is Baldwin, as a few other pieces I'm familiar with, but this is one of the older ones. And look at the size of the stack on that. Gigantic. Something I would love to see in operation sometime, someday. These are like the ones that you see on the old Western movies where they have like the, I guess you would say the cowboys or the robbers chasing the train. Very similar look to this one right here. I just found a smudge on the lens. Hopefully it wasn't affecting the video quality. Also, I know I'm not spending a whole lot of time on each piece here. That's because there is so much to see here. But as mentioned, if you do want to get more details, you can certainly look up the road numbers and the names and get more information for yourself or simply come here to the museum in person. And you can spend all day here learning about these incredible pieces of equipment. Now here's a Pensy number 5741. This one's a more of a beast of a locomotive here. I do like the yellow pinstriping on the trailing wheels and even on the drivers too makes it pop a little bit now although this one is in relatively good condition it's not pristine it does look used looks worn i kind of like that look you know it gives it some character and shows that it had a a tough life when it was in operation power for the masses a 460 10 wheeler 1924 built, retired 1955. Not a very long life. There's a lot more to see here too. We kind of do progress with older to newer. So just making our way down the steam line here. And we do have a whole nother wing of the building. So I can already tell you this is gonna be a longer video, but if you do enjoy this type of stuff and appreciate this collection here at the museum, then I definitely invite you to continue watching the entire video because there's gonna be some very Interesting and unique pieces that I know are here that I'm excited to show you including the outside where there's even some Amtrak and a GG1 so a lot more to come Number 7002 dubbed as the world's fastest locomotive Let's see here 442 Atlantic wheel configuration built in 1902 retired 1939 built by the Pensy in Altoona This is the Juniata shop there Let's see, this was a, uh, New York Central was the first to break the 100 mile per hour barrier. Writing companies soon had four Atlantic type locomotives equally capable. Pennsylvania Railroad E2 and E3 class Atlantics quickly developed a reputation as fast, dependable runners. And it says that reportedly setting a ground record of 127.1 miles per hour. That is incredibly fast for a very complex piece of machinery here like this. To see this barreling down the tracks over 100 miles an hour would be a sight to see. And these wheels here, these drivers are gigantic. I mean, I'm on a little platform here, but if I was to step down, 
you can see they are clearly taller than me. Very massive drive wheels, and that's what's making it capable to get up to that high speed. The larger the wheels, typically the faster it could go. Even the rear truck wheels here are about the size of the drive wheels on the Baldwin Locomotive 26 at Steamtown. So this is a whole nother scale locomotive. That is a thing of beauty right there. Conrail is the same company that got me interested in trains as a kid. I used to see these running on the old Erie lines and to see a restored Conrail locomotive here puts a smile on my face. So we'll be checking that out a little bit later. This one here is known as the John Bull. It's pretty primitive to say the least. Not a whole lot of protection from anything. It's a pretty much an open cab design. So this was built in 1940. Okay, it's built as a replica. Something very, very unique. Everything's kind of out here in the open. You can see the leaf springs, the drivers, the boiler here, and even the firebox. Like I said, not a whole lot of protection, but a very unique looking locomotive at that. Look at even what is it they know as the uh, cow, cow catcher when animals are on the tracks. This plow shaped design would literally catch the cows. Sometimes they'd land on that or it'd push them off to the side. But that was necessary when they're operating through farmland and prairies and things of the sort. This is, I believe, one of two GG1 locomotives and one of several I've seen in person. There's one at the Amtrak station in Harrisburg. There's also two up in New York that I did see in person that are basically decaying away. There's also one at the Railroaders Memorial Museum in Altoona, Pennsylvania. This one, though, is probably the best condition of them all. It is cosmetically restored. It's got the black and yellow paint scheme to it. Pensy logo and it is enormous at that and as I mentioned before not to be repetitive but in case you haven't seen my previous videos it's basically two locomotives put together back to back so it could be operated from either end depending on which direction it's going and it has the panographs because it is fully electrical but they did have a steam system on there for heating up coach cars and maybe even for a whistle if I'm not mistaken but they were kind of retrofitted with different pieces of equipment depending on what they were pulling, whether it was freight and or coach cars. But i never seen one of these operating in person, but you can find videos on YouTube to see a GG1 operational. But yeah, as I mentioned, fuel oil, and that would be for the onboard um, generator, I guess. Like I said, to provide heat or air pressure. But there is one of these outside as well. So we'll be seeing a second GG1, but number 4935 is a beauty. It says number one, Lima Locomotive Works. This is 1906 on it. Now this is a Shea locomotive. This is another very unique locomotive. And these actually operate still to this day down in Virginia at the Cass Scenic Railroad. And these are basically driven with gears. It's not, it doesn't have big drive wheels or connecting rods. It's a very unique looking locomotive. And I was gonna to mention too, but the sign states it used for lumber and mills. Yeah. Eph Ephraim Shea, a Michigan lumberman. So you found them traditionally at mills, lumber companies hauling timber out. But yeah, the very unique looking, not a, speed demon at all very low geared low powered but able to pull a lot of weight but these are operating to this day at the cast scenic railway a place i'm hoping to visit in the future
it's a V-type piston. Okay, so right here, I was calling the push rod, I guess it'd be the piston. This looks similar to like a V-rod motorcycle, you know, coming up at the slant on both sides. And we do have the two wheels here up front, so four wheels. Uh, it's basically a 4-4 four, four wheel configuration, which is kind of different. Not very big wheels, so it wouldn't be very fast, but it does have a very different setup. And just goes to show that the amount of steam locomotives that are out there that were produced, you know, they varied a lot. You know, there's all different types of designs, built for different purposes, different uses, different speeds. And then you got something like this, an ally to industry, a little switcher, gasoline locomotive known as a Vulcan. Now there are other gasoline locomotives known as, known as Plymouths. And this is actually smaller than a Plymouth. So this is a Vulcan and it's very, very small. Probably a little V8 engine. Not much to really have to worry about. Just kind of start it up and accelerate or brake. Very simple little switcher engine just for moving one or two cars about the yard. So number 2233, GP30 Conrail. This is a gorgeous looking locomotive. The color, the style of it, it is what I've come to love with railroading. Although I do love steam locomotives, I can certainly appreciate this masterpiece right here. The color alone is just, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. It stands out from almost everything else here. Conrail blue is a really incredible color. And they actually are having it open for cab tours as well, so we may be able to get a glimpse inside at the controls and to give you a view from the inside as well. But this is, boy, what I would love to see this running on the rails again. That was a very neat experience to be able to go inside and check out the cab with some history about it. So this engine locomotive is 59 years old. And from what I was told that when it came here, Conrail actually was responsible for the paint job and they actually took care of it. And it's been on display here and it looks practically brand new. You wouldn't think it's 59 years old, but it's a phenomenal looking lo locomotive. And behind that is something that would have ran on the same line too, Pennsylvania. 7006 here and this is definitely much older I, uh, maybe not much older but definitely older than the gp30 but this is a older style diesel electric locomotive and then we do have a another pensy unit which appears to be maybe an f unit so they have so many uh historic pieces here it's almost hard to fathom that they're all being preserved here in this museum 5901a so these operate as a or b units and the way you could tell is the a unit has the cab on it where the engineer would operate the locomotive the b unit would look almost identical to this except that there is no cab it's just flat on both ends it looked like identical to the back of this locomotive so it'd be a flat end flat end and that would just be a power unit it would just be for additional power for pulling longer, heavier trains. But ideally, they run as an ABA unit where it would be an A unit like this, a B unit, which would be the power unit, and then another A unit. So it would be three power units combined to pull a freight or passenger train. But these are really neat looking. They look almost kind of futuristic for their age. 
kind of ahead of its time when they came out, but to see them uh, running in tandem though, like AB or AA unit or ABA is something to see. So you can always check that out on YouTube, but just wanted to fill you in in case you weren't aware of that. So this is actually pretty neat. They got a whole variation of equipment out here and even a turntable as well. And a really sad looking Amtrak. So this one is uh, was electrified when it was in operation. You can see the pantograph up there. And was responsible for pulling thousands upon thousands of passengers. It has a similar feel and look to the turntable yard area in the Railroads Memorial Museum, except there are more pieces of equipment out here. I'm not sure if this is an operational turntable or not. I believe it is. But I just don't think it's used on a regular basis. But another unique piece right here is a kind of a, a truck on rails. It actually has a straight eight V8 engine in there. And the rest of it just looks like a kind of passenger car, but inside though, we got the compartment there to operate it. So I'm not sure what this would be used for. I'm not sure if it's used like inner urban service or transport for, you know, workers for companies or something that I don't know, but definitely unique looking, but it's got really small leading truck wheels and some older looking, obviously they're older looking, but uh, different style rear wheels here. I guess these would be the drive wheels, but a lot more to see. So right here we do have a old Conrail box car and although it does look big on camera, it's actually un unbelievably large. And the way we're gonna be able to show that is by having RJ walk up to it, just to show you the grand scale of this box car. Yeah, that is ginormous. As Elf says, ginormous. Yeah, that is the largest boxcar I've ever seen. I believe he said it's 80 feet long. That is pretty incredible. They can hold a lot of cargo on there. So near the corner of the property here, we do have a Baldwin Locomotive Works diesel, number 1200. Now we did see Baldwin on the inside building those steamers. And this is what replaced those steamers, the early model diesel electric. As we make our way behind it, we do have, looks like a mail, I think a mail car, possibly a baggage car. And then we do have a really unique looking diesel over here, number 701. This one, number 520, is pretty sad looking. Really worn, tired, weathered, and well past her prime. It's even missing some of the connecting rods there for the drive wheels. Still beautiful in its own right, but most likely we'll never see operation again. So over here we do have an old Amtrak passenger coach car, which I actually believe is a sleeper car. It has the larger window spaced out, so each of those would be like a little sleeper bedroom. Next to that, though, is something rather unique. 
and something that's self-propelled, self-powered. Number 8860, 860. This is actually an electrified passenger coach car that could run under its own power. So the pantograph poles would lift up, make connection with the wires, and the engineer would control it right from the front there. So that's a pretty unique looking piece of equipment. It's starting to rain, so we're going to have to pick things up here a little bit. But right now, we have 3750, known as the K4. It's Pennsylvania's locomotive. Very iconic locomotive here in the state of Pennsylvania. And they're actually refurbing, rebuilding one in Altoona at the Railroaders Memorial Museum to operating conditions. So we'll actually be able to see one of these operating on the rails again in the future. And across from that is number 6755, another Pensy locomotive. And it just looks really rugged and mean and looks like it could uh, haul quite a load and i'm gonna kind of speed this up <laughs> i'm getting wet do have a lehigh valley uh might be a rdc car and in the fenced off area here is the second of two gg1s that one is definitely not cosmetically restored but at least it's still on site here next to 915 another electric amtrak so very cool pieces here on the outside definitely worth coming out as long as you don't get rainy weather like we are right now. So we're going to head back inside and continue on. So after coming in from outside, we did come upon a train room here. This is model after HO. And although there's nothing running, it's highly, highly detailed. Everything from elevated rail lines to little subway stations, farmland, and everything else in between. Really detailed. I didn't really spend much time with filming this just because there is other things to see here. But... You could literally spend at least 15, 20 minutes in here looking at all the details, even like little cutaway buildings that allow you to see the inside to some GG ones up there. RJ did cover a lot of this room here, so you can check that out in his video if you want to. But there is more trains up here. So Lewis is over here. He's got some uh, G scale trains moving about. Yeah, I think I broke it. We got a Lego model train display. Oh, I got the mystery machine and Ecto one down there. All right, so one area that I missed is right here, almost in the middle of the building, which is next to and underneath number 1187. It's actually a little drop down bay here. You can walk down and get an underneath look of a locomotive so we're gonna check this out really quick so the tr the locomotive i'm just gonna refer to it as a train is sitting on rails which are sitting on beams being supported by these poles here but it is safe enough to walk underneath and everything is labeled here everything from the ash pan to the water supply hose and obviously we're back here in the tender now brake beams bolts and pins and there's some diagrams and pictures showing you in better detail what everything is. But it's pretty neat that you can actually walk underneath here. We make our way to the front. Equalizing springs, brake shoes. So here's like the back side of the drive wheels. You see the axles and everything like that, valve gear. And coming up here to the uh, lead trucks there. So up here on the bridge gives you a great overview of everything here. Pretty much a bird's eye view. And if it's ever crowded down there. Oh, my SD card filled up on my action camera. So back on the phone now, but just stating that, you know, if you're up here, you can always get a bird's eye view without being down there if it's really crowded. But the reason we're up here on the bridge is because up here is supposed to be a, another train display. RJ said last time he was here that this was closed. And it looks like it is open, so we're going to head in here and see if we can check it out.
All right, everyone, that was my look here at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. I can't say enough about how incredible it is. There is so much to see. For only $10, though, I recommend coming in the morning. You could literally spend all day here. I didn't even see probably half of what they have inside. There's a lot of things to stop and read. And I uh, kind of focused on the things that looked appealing to me, but there is things for everyone. Hands-on exhibits, um, there's tours you could take, there's inside, outside. So if you're ever in the area of Strasbourg, definitely stop here, check it out, make a day of it. You certainly won't regret it. They even have an incredible gift shop too, which I didn't get a chance to really spend too much time in, but I will be returning to kind of take a more in-depth tour without the camera. But with that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, consider subscribing. And until next time, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.